Okay, guys, today we're gonna go on a monument quest. We're going to find as many things as we possibly can in about a mm, little bit of time. So normally the museums start closing about 5.30. The museum I really want to go to, I'm gonna need way more time than I have. So, monuments, here we come. That site is our first of many, and that was actually a Japanese inspired garden where in 1912 they dedicated that area by planting symbolic trees for friendship and then they also placed the monument that's there as well so that is just one of the many that we're finding along this wonderful stroll yeah wonderful stroll amazing that they have such unique monuments for each individual president or person of importance and along with the monument is always something like this wall there's something to tell a little bit more about the story that goes with it now this wall right here has a lot of different quotes from people who were present during the struggles of Martin Luther King and all of the things that went on around that their motivational phrases things that tell you to love and not hate, telling us that we all need freedom, things like that. And so it's not just the monument itself, it's everything that goes with the monument to honor that person, which makes it so unique and special. And um, this one's pretty nice. Now all around DC you'll find monuments and memorials and buildings of importance and things that are of interest. This is one of the most alive cities when it comes to our history, preserving people who are of importance and things like that. So I just do encourage you to whenever you come to the city to uh, just explore, definitely just explore. The best thing that I have found for myself personally is getting the National Mall but yeah, the National Mall app, what it does is it tells you where all these different locations are so you can kind of plan and go in a circle versus trying to hit one and then go to another and then be across town from one another. It helps you get more in each individual trip. This is pretty interesting. My campground is in Greenbelt and there's a reason that it is there. It was actually part of Roosevelt's overall master plan for preserving the green space there. And actually everything grew around that green space. Kind of neat to know, had no idea. Franklin D. Roosevelt Memorial has a beautiful, beautiful feature.
think of all the monuments I've seen thus far, that one tells the most complete story. It walks you through the various points of his presidency as well as at the very end, it's culminated by his wife and another amazing waterfall. It's a great representation, to say the least, of one man's legacy. And I'm really happy that I got to find this one today because it gave me a lot of insight as to the presidency and the terms and things that he was interested in, even though it was a monument. This is a 17th century Japanese pagoda that was actually brought here as another gift of friendship in 1957. It was placed here around the tidal basin along with the monuments and memorials and it symbolizes sky, wind, fire, water, and earth in the different layers. So it's pretty neat that their gift has such an interesting meaning and something that's very valid to their culture and then it has this beautiful place. imagine whenever we first started we were way over there and then we went all the way around the tidal basin and finally made it to the Jefferson Memorial. We're gonna go inside and check out the exhibits first and then go to the front where we can get a better view. Yeah. top floor now. We're about to go out this door right over here and check out this view. Oh, it's so bright. We are now leaving Jefferson and we're going alongside the tidal basin again. Now something super cool about the tidal basin is you can actually paddle boat around in it. So as I was watching, there's several different groups that are out there. They have regular paddle boats and then they have these ones that look like little swans. So that is something fun that you can do also in DC as though the list is not long enough. I'm beginning to feel very overwhelmed on. I have seen one whole side of the tidal basin and let's see one two three museums it's a lot now I don't recommend keeping the same pace that I am keeping by any means no um, let's see yesterday I woke up at about 6 30 in the morning because I had to secure passes to the Holocaust Museum and the African American exhibit and it just kept on going. I made it back to my campsite and actually into bed at about 11. And then I woke up this morning at 7.30 and started it all over again. I had my first visit at 11. So I did have a little bit of time to do a little bit of work in there, but not very much. And so today, rather than staying out until 11, I think I'm gonna find some Wi-Fi some cold air, charge all my devices, and try to troubleshoot my camera. So that's what we're off to do now. Figure that out. Which means first, 
time to find the metro again. 